Hey folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic. Kamigawa Neon Dynasty is here, and if you want to grab any singles or build any new decks, remember to jump over to Harry Tarantula, linked in the description, and use my promo codes. You can now get one of these sweet Commander Mechanic copy tokens by artist Kelvin Sue if you tell them I sent you. A little while ago I did a budget Killian Inc. duelist with Luris Companion build on the channel, focusing on efficient targeted removal, low to the ground curves, and winning through Voltron or Aristocrat lines. I've linked that deck tech up top. While that deck was cool and good, we've just received a new legend that may crank that concept up to 11, and remove an entire color. Meet Light Paws, Emperor's Voice. This 2 mana 2-2 two -two fox advisor has a text box that looks like a short story, so let's break down what she does. Whenever an aura enters the battlefield under your control, if you cast it, you get to tutor up an aura with equal or lower mana value and put it onto Light Paws. It also stipulates that it needs to have a different name, but for our format that really doesn't matter. What matters is that each aura you cast ends up pumping up Light Paws. The original aura you cast doesn't need to target Light Paws, but the one you tutor does. So cast a pacifism effect and tutor a buff for Light Paws into play. This turns into a hell of a Voltron build, where every turn you're putting one to two new auras onto Light Paws, and she'll be punching opponents hard and fast. Let's take a look at the deck breakdown. First, the curve is incredibly low on this deck, average mana value being two and a half. As such, the mana base is a lot lower than I'd include in most decks, topping out at 33 lands. You really only need 2-3 to three lands over the course of an entire game to really pop off here, so better to keep that profile sleek. There's also not a lot of non-basics in the deck, which is great. Basic lands are awesome, folks. There's nothing wrong with them. The only non-basics I've included either make a boatload of mana like Nykthos Shrine to Nyx, draw cards like Roadside Reliquary, or provide essential utility like Hall of Heliod's Generosity. Also, because of the mana curve being so low, there are incredibly few mana rocks in the deck. Soul Ring, Pearl Medallion, and Mind Stone are the only ones that earn a slot. We want to be casting our Commander or an Aura with two mana rather than a mana rock. This deck loves to cast on curve, not ahead of it. Part of that reason is that our additional mana generation comes from catch-up mechanics. Knight of the White Orchid, Loyal Warhound, and Archaeomancer's Map are our main ways to ensure we're staying up to par with our opponents who may be ramping ahead of us. These help us grab crucial additional land and help justify the lower overall land count. Land tax certainly helps here too, but it's definitely not necessary. If you're looking to build a budget version of this deck, leave it out. Our creature base is actually pretty substantial for a Voltron deck. The reason for having over 20 creatures is that each creature helps the deck's game plan, and despite having lower mana values, they result in long-term value. The majority of our creatures are aura discount engines, like Hero Virois, Sram Senior Edificer, or Danitha Capuchin. These can help result in us casting 2-4 to four spells each turn as early as turn 3. With a curve this low and cultivating this much value, this is exactly where we want to be. Our creatures can also help us recur or tutor auras too. This is great for gassing up and might as well be card draw too. Auramancer, Ironclad Slayer, and Heliod's Pilgrim, all despite being 3 mana, are some of our best late game plays. The top end of our creature curve helps us with some longevity. Ajani's Chosen getting us two cats per aura cast with Light Paws out, Armored Sky Hunter letting us tutor for more and more auras, and of course Sun Titan, who can recur nearly everything in our deck. Our removal is a little thin, largely because we want to be proactive rather than reactive in this deck. We aren't going to be removing threats, but we're going to be the threat. So I've kept targeted removal to Disenchant, Source to Plowshares, and Generous Gift. That's really all we need. We should be using player removal as our permanent removal. Our board wipes are minimal too, but selected so that we can keep our key creatures around. Winds of Wrath keeps only our enchanted creatures, while Slash the Ranks can quickly clear out all non-commanders and clear a path for big punchies from Light Paws. The most important part about this deck is the auras, however. Because Light Paws tutors up auras of equal or lesser mana value, we need to be very aware of how many auras we have at each value. 
I slanted the deck towards two mana value auras that can be discounted to just one mana. So you can have a critical turn or two where you can slam six plus auras into play at a time and swing to take a player out. Our removal also comes in the form of auras as well. Being able to drop a Minimus Containment on an opponent's creature, then tutor up a Gift of Immortality onto Light Paws is pretty amazing. Being able to give our commander evasion via an angelic gift or benevolent blessing or spirit mantle helps us ensure we're getting through for that sweet commander damage when we need it. Being able to get that kind of utility at instant speed is important too. If we're stuck casting only at sorcery speed, we're telegraphing a lot of what we're doing and maybe shields down more often than not. So hanging on to instant speed auras like Chomano's Blessing or Timely Ward are going to make for big plays that blank opponent's removal and get us additional value. Sigarda's Aid is probably the best card in the deck for that reason. Turning all of our auras into combat tricks or flashing in auras at the end of an opponent's turn can result in untapping and just eliminating someone. But Chris, you may be asking, how are we getting a 2-2 to deal 21 or more damage? Good question, friend. We have a few specific auras that just make Light Paws dummy big. All that glitters, Armored Ascension, and Sage's Reverie are our big hitters. Typically, we need one of these on Light Paws, and they're big enough to take someone out. We can get there even quicker by ensuring our commander has Double Strike. Battle Mastery or Halvar, God of Battle, do this for us, and mean we need Light Paws up to only 11 power. I've also included one of my favorites, Nettle Cyst, in this list. It's not an aura, but it's an all that glitters that just doesn't die. Great for bulking up a creature and not just your commander. Now, I mentioned this in regards to land tax, but you could absolutely make this a sleek budget deck. Cutting out more expensive pieces like Esper Sentinel, Flawless Maneuver, or Commander's Plate can trim this down to $100 easily. Check out the full list in the description below, and let me know in the comments what you would add or change about it if you were to put it together yourself. As always, folks, good luck, and have fun.